the ravages of British rule in India, exploitation, atrocities, and the struggle for freedom. The British conquest of India, spearheaded by the East India Company, stands as one of the darkest chapters in history, characterized by sheer brutality, exploitation, and deceit. The British, driven by insatiable greed, systematically dismantled a prosperous civilization, draining its wealth and humiliating its people. The barbaric nature of British rule in India cannot be understated, as it brought untold misery to millions and left a lasting scar on the nation's psyche. The East India Company, initially a trading enterprise, gradually morphed into a monstrous colonial power. It arrived in India under the guise of trade, but its real intent was far more sinister. Through a combination of cunning diplomacy, military might, and outright treachery, the company secured a foothold in India. It exploited the internal divisions and weaknesses of Indian rulers, playing one against the other, and gradually extended its control over vast territories. The company's method was not one of open conquest, but of subtle and insidious manipulation, which proved more devastating in the long run. Once in power, the East India Company unleashed a reign of terror and exploitation that would become the hallmark of British rule in India. The company ruthlessly exploited India's resources, extracting vast amounts of wealth to fuel Britain's industrial revolution. India's economy, which had been one of the most prosperous in the world, was systematically dismantled. The textile industry, which had been a major source of wealth and employment, was particularly hard hit. Indian weavers, once renowned for their craftsmanship, were reduced to poverty as British-made goods flooded the market. The British destroyed India's traditional industries to create a captive market for their products, turning the country into a mere supplier of raw materials for British factories. The British were not content with just exploiting India's resources. They also sought to undermine its culture and traditions. The British administrators and missionaries looked down upon Indian customs and practices, considering them inferior and barbaric. They introduced English education and Western values, which were meant to civilize the Indian population. However, this so-called civilizing mission was nothing more than a thinly veiled attempt to impose British culture on India and erase its rich heritage. The British ridiculed and suppressed Indian languages, arts, and literature, leaving a cultural void that took decades to fill. The British also imposed a brutal and exploitative system of taxation that bled the Indian peasantry dry. The infamous Permanent Settlement of Bengal, introduced by Lord Cornwallis in 1793, is a prime example of this. Under this system, land revenue was fixed permanently regardless of the actual productivity of the land. This forced the peasants to pay exorbitant taxes, often leading to the loss of their land and livelihoods. The British landlords, known as zamindars, were given absolute power over the peasants, leading to widespread corruption and abuse. The British were indifferent to the suffering of the Indian peasantry, as long as the revenue kept flowing into their coffers. Famines became a regular occurrence under British rule, as the colonial administration prioritized profit over the well-being of the people. The most infamous of these was the Great Bengal Famine of 1770, which claimed the lives of an estimated 10 million people. The East India Company's policies of hoarding grain and exporting food to Britain exacerbated the famine, leading to widespread starvation. The British response to the famine was callous and indifferent, with little effort made to provide relief to the starving population. This pattern repeated itself throughout British rule, with famines occurring with alarming regularity, each time leaving millions dead and destitute. The British also employed brutal measures to suppress any resistance to their rule. The Indian struggle for independence of 1857, also known as the Sepoy Mutiny, was met with unprecedented brutality by the British. The so-called rebellion, which began due to disobeying by Indian soldiers, sepoys, in the British army, quickly spread across northern India. The British response was swift and ruthless, with entire villages being massacred and cities razed to the ground.
The rebellion was crushed with an iron hand, and the British sought to instill fear in the hearts of the Indian population through acts of extreme violence. The aftermath of the rebellion saw the formal transfer of power from the East India Company to the British Crown, but the brutality and exploitation continued unabated. One of the most horrifying acts of British brutality was the Jallianwala Bagh Massacre of 1919, an event that would forever symbolize the ruthlessness of British rule. On April 13, 1919, thousands of unarmed men, women, and children gathered in the Jallianwala Bagh, a public garden in Amritsar, Punjab, to peacefully protest against the oppressive Rowlett Act, which allowed the British government to imprison any Indian without trial. The crowd also included pilgrims who had come to the city to celebrate the festival of Baisakhi. Without warning or provocation, Brigadier General Reginald Dyer, a British officer, ordered his troops to open fire on the crowd. For ten minutes, the soldiers fired continuously, aiming directly at the dense crowd. The narrow exits were blocked, leaving the people trapped with no means of escape. The massacre resulted in the deaths of hundreds of innocent people, with many more wounded. The exact number of casualties remains disputed, but estimates range from 379 to over 1,000. Dyer's actions were not those of a rogue officer, but reflected the British Empire's attitude toward its colonial subjects. The massacre was a deliberate attempt to instill terror in the Indian population and suppress any form of dissent. Dyer himself later claimed that his actions were necessary to teach the Indians a lesson and prevent further uprisings. The British government, while publicly condemning Dyer's actions, privately supported him, even rewarding him with a large sum of money raised by British citizens who hailed him as the savior of the empire. The Jallianwala Bagh massacre shocked the conscience of the world and galvanized the Indian independence movement. It marked a turning point in India's struggle for freedom, as it exposed the true nature of British rule and the depths of its brutality. The massacre left an indelible mark on the Indian psyche, with memories of the blood-soaked garden serving as a powerful reminder of the horrors of colonialism. The British also indulged in widespread corruption and looting during their rule. The East India Company officials, known as Nabobs, amassed enormous fortunes through corrupt practices. They extorted money from Indian rulers, embezzled state funds, and engaged in fraudulent trade practices. The wealth they accumulated was sent back to Britain, further enriching the British elite while impoverishing India. The British systematically drained India of its wealth, leaving the country in a state of economic ruin. The transfer of wealth from India to Britain was so massive that it has been described as one of the greatest acts of economic exploitation in history. The humiliation suffered by Indians under British rule was not limited to economic exploitation. The British treated Indians with utter contempt and racism, considering them inferior beings. Indians were subjected to discriminatory laws and practices that denied them basic rights and dignity. The British judicial system was heavily biased against Indians, with harsh punishments meted out for even minor offenses. Indians were excluded from positions of power and influence, with all important decisions being made by the British. The British also sought to sow division among the Indian population to maintain their control. They exploited the existing religious and caste divisions in Indian society, using the policy of divide and rule to keep the population fragmented and weak. The British encouraged communal tensions between Hindus and Muslims, which would later culminate in the bloody partition of India in 1947. The British were also responsible for the introduction of the notorious caste system in its modern form, which further divided and oppressed the Indian population. The British rule in India was marked by a complete disregard for the welfare and dignity of the Indian people. The British saw India as nothing more than a colony to be exploited for their benefit, and they went to great lengths to achieve this.
the economic exploitation, cultural destruction, and brutal repression that characterized British rule left India impoverished and scarred. The British may have left India in 1947, but the legacy of their rule is still evident in the poverty, inequality, and division that continue to affect the country. In conclusion, the British conquest and subsequent rule of India were marked by an unparalleled level of brutality, exploitation, and corruption. The East India Company, followed by the British Crown, systematically dismantled India's economy, plundered its wealth, and humiliated its people. The British imposed a brutal system of taxation, engineered famines, and suppressed any resistance with extreme violence. They sought to undermine India's culture and traditions, while simultaneously enriching themselves through corrupt practices. The legacy of British rule is one of division, poverty, and humiliation, and it serves as a stark reminder of the ugly and barbaric nature of colonialism. The scars left by British rule in India are deep and lasting, and they continue to shape the nation's identity and history.